This video is brought to you by Sailrite. Visit sailrite.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. In this video, we're going to show you how to reupholster the base of a corner bench for a pontoon boat. We've already done a video showing how to do the backrest and showing how to do the seat. This video will show the base. So let's get started. Here's what the finished base will look like after we install our new vinyl fabric called Eversoft. Let's get started and show you how it's done. We'll be using the old vinyl fabric as a pattern for the new, so first we need to remove it. Okay, we're going to use the staple remover or staple lifter and we're going to remove all of the staples holding the old vinyl in place. And we're going to try to keep this old vinyl in fairly good shape because we're going to use it as a pattern for the new. Here's the vinyl removed from the base. Unfortunately, my mic batteries died, so I'll explain what I'm doing here. This panel comes in separate pieces. In fact, there are four separate pieces, and each one of those pieces accommodates a specific shape for the base. So what I'll do is I will rip the seams apart using a seam ripper, being careful not to cut into my vinyl fabric because I am gonna be using this vinyl fabric as a pattern for the new vinyl. Now, unfortunately, I should have made match-up marks on the underside of the vinyl before I took each panel apart. I forgot to do that. So what I'll do here is I'll match up those panels where it was sewn together and place match-up marks using a Sharpie marker on the bottom side of the vinyl. Then I'll label each one of them for easy identification. You want to do this at least at every seam location where panels are torn apart. You can do it in one or multiple places depending on the size of the panel. These matchup marks will make it easy for you to determine what panel goes where and also where it should be matched up together. So we'll be transferring these marks to the new vinyl. Now we can use our old vinyl to pattern on the new vinyl. We're going to pattern on the back side of this vinyl. Okay, you can see the sides which are stapled because they have the staples in them and then the sides that are sewn. And I don't want to cut this to the exact size of this because they trimmed it after it was stapled in place. So I'm going to leave it long on the sides that were stapled. Uh, but here at the top it was stapled and I don't need all this excess fabric. So I'm just going to trace a line maybe an inch or so outside of that area. Now here I have to have it um, match the seam. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the fabric because it's old and I'm going to make sure that the seam is down like this and we will trace right along this edge. Oops, I, geez. I was using a marker and I don't want to use a marker so I'm using a, a, a scri the scryball pencil. So I'm holding down the seam allowance, tracing up against it. And then there's our matchup mark. So we're going to put a line there and then we'll put a one on it to make sure that we know how it gets uh, sewn to the other pan adjacent panel. We're marking on the underside of this marine quality vinyl called Eversoft. It's actually a four-way stretch vinyl, so it actually is excellent for applications like the base of this pontoon boat because it'll stretch slightly to fit the base. Okay, this is stapled, so that's not important. So this is one, so we're going to label that one, and we will just do that with all the panels. Okay, we've actually patterned everything and if you look at our patterns, uh, see I added extra for where they're stapled. And then when I did the sides where we're sewing, I made sure that the seam allowance was splayed out and traced around those. Uh, so, and I labeled where we staple it. I put a mark here. This one has tons of shape that it is warped because it's been in the sun for so long. So what I did is I, I splayed it out nice and flat and held it in place when I traced around this area. Now this area I could hardly even get to lay flat. So what I did is I marked around it a half inch outside of the fold that wants to stay permanent. And uh, that should give us a pretty good shape. Looks like I'm a little bit outside here. So let's see if I put everything back to where it was. Yeah, that's a half, approximately a half inch. Maybe a little more I should go. And then when they come down here, this actually turns in a little bit more than I thought, like that. 
So this is gonna be my cut line. So see when you fold that out, it comes out to that about. We're cutting vinyl fabric so we can just cut it out with scissors. So notice that you didn't cut this opening out. Uh, we wanna do that when it's on the chair. And if you scroll over to here, you notice that we didn't cut this notch into our fabric because we want to do that again when we're stapling it. Here, looks like they cut out some excess fabric and left this in place. We're going to leave it just the way it is here. So no extra cutting for that. We'll do that while it's on the frame. Next up, we'll start sewing these panels together. So here's our pa panels all laid out and it looks really strange. We got a, a real sharp turn here. Um, you'd think that would be leveled out to match that, but it wasn't, so we're going to stick with that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this, two and two match up together, which means these two edges should be almost flush, so these outside surfaces would face each other, so they get sewn on like that. Okay, usually when you're trying to ma match up marks, like this two goes approximately here, you start out, you sew this way, and then you start out and you sew that way. But that's kind of a pain. So what I know when I match up the two, this is flush. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sew this direction and follow the contour. We'll start here. These two go together, matched up ends. We sew a half inch from the raw edge of the fabric. And we'll do a little bit of reversing. We want to make sure that we reverse because we're going to be pulling on this pretty tall, pretty hard. When I say we're going to be pulling on this very hard, I don't mean when we're sewing, but when we're applying it over the frame. We'll be uh, pulling it over the frame and stretching it and then stapling it in place. So that's why we need to do good reversing at the beginning and the end of our sewing. Then when we get to the sh shape area, we just roll this around on the underside keeping it at about the half inch mark here on the needle plate. We're sewing this project with a Sayrite Fabricator sewing machine. This is the deluxe Sayrite Fabricator package. And then when we get to this end, do some more reversing. Okay. This is a staple edge, this is a staple edge, this is to and this is, which means we, that's why it doesn't match up here or here because we just put extra material in, but we still have our matchup marks. So we know where it needs to be sewn together and we also have this curve which begins here. So all we need to do is make sure the matchup marks are on top of each other. And to do that in sewing, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put them together and I'm gonna make a little triangle just so that I can see through, I can see that they're lined up like that. So we'll put outside surfaces together and we'll sew these together. Sometimes for precision pieces, again, we discussed uh, that you would start from the middle and sew to the right or the left, and then you would start from the middle and sew the remainder. But in this application for a base like that, all I'm gonna do is just make sure that our matchup marks are on top of each other. Then I'm going to r r basically follow this up by and not stretch one more than the other. From the matchup marks, I'm walking the top layer of the vinyl up to find where it rests on the opposite end. And that way, I know where this panel should be sewn on so that our matchup marks come out right. You may have noticed as I walk this vinyl up, especially at the area that adds shape, like at this three inch edge, I matched up the edges as I carefully walked it up to the opposite side. So hopefully this is about the right position of where this panel should be sewn on. We'll find out when we get to the matchup marks. Which way should this go? Well, it really doesn't matter. Uh, I'm just gonna go back like this. Let it fold like that. This, this little dog ear that I'm creating won't make a hill of beans difference. So watch. What I'm referring to is the extra fabric that's hanging over the edge of the under fabric. It's not a big deal. So now I'm just gonna start matching up this edge. See, my matchup marks are almost on top of each other. They're, this one's a little bit off, but it's not going to matter. If you appreciate these free how-to tutorial videos, be sure to give us a thumbs up. It really helps our channel.
coming down here to where the shape is. I'm going to stop about a half inch from that edge, right about there, bury my needle. And then I'm going to lift my presser foot a little bit and pull this assembly over, making sure that I'm not sewing any bumps or any wrinkles, I should say, in the fabric. See, there's a wrinkle. I'm going to make sure that wrinkles out like that. And then I'm going to turn the assembly, turn it a little bit more. Now I'm going to lower my foot. Make sure I don't have any wrinkles before my needle, and I don't. I'm a little bit away from a half inch, so I'm going to straighten that out as I go. About a half inch from this corner, my needle's buried. I'm going to lift my foot. I'm going to pivot my material over. I'm going to lower my foot, and I'm going to sew down this side, matching up this edge. Then when I get to the bottom here, I'm going to do some reversing. So I have one here, and I cut the notches like we did earlier, and one here. So we're going to match those up, and then I'm going to carefully walk my fabric up, making sure that I'm not pulling more, one more than the other. And right there is where we'll start sewing. We have a little notch out of here. Remember, I have extra, extra fabric for stapling, so it's not going to be a big deal. Our sewing is going to start right here. Um, if, if I hadn't cut that notch out, I that wouldn't be there, but no big deal because it's a staple area. So right there, I'm going to sew. If it looks confusing of where you should start sewing, go back and look at your old vinyl, which you should not throw away until you're done. Okay, we have a part here that we sewed through. We want to make sure that it's splayed flat as we sew over that. So I'm going to hold it down. And then we take a turn. So we just pivot the fabric around. Matchup marks are almost on top of each other. I'm going to stop a half inch from this corner, approximately. If I'm off, I can use the reverse lever to bury my needle at that position. Now I can pivot. Actually, I don't want to pivot it much. I want to roll this fabric around on the bottom side, which is easier. Mm hmm. Pivot, lift my foot so that I can let the fabric relax. Now I can sew down this side. Lower my foot. Never want to sew with the foot up. You will cause sewing problems. I get to the half inch area of this transition right about there. My needle's buried. I lift my foot. I roll this fabric around. Lift my foot so that I can get the wrinkle out of the way. Lower the foot, make sure there's no wrinkles in there. I could, could cut a slit in this, which would allow it to relax a little bit. Going no deeper than the seam allowance, which allowed it to relax. Now I'm pushing my fabric back to the half inch location and sew. And do reversing. Remember, we have excess fabric for stapling. Now we can fit the new vinyl over the base frame and staple it in place. This is quarter inch sew foam, or quarter inch foam. We use sew foam. And it's actually in pretty good shape. Um, I don't see any mold or anything going on. I'm not gonna peel it off and put new stuff on there. We already have a pretty good layer of silk film over the top of it, so it should be easy to pull our new fabric down. So if you're, foam is in bad shape, you can peel it off, use a putty knife to kind of clean the plastic up the best as possible. Maybe some 3M adhesive remover to take off any excess that doesn't come off. And you could glue silk film quarter inch in its place and then use foam lock spray adhesive to bond it. Okay, we've draped the fabric over top of our base. And I want my tail, I can either have my tail going down like it is here or up like it is here, and I think it looks better going up. So this is the tail I'm talking about. 
Um, it can go down or up, but I think it'll look better if it's laying here. I don't want it to twist anywhere. So I'm going to pay attention to where that tail is falling as I staple this onto this edge. So that looks pretty good like that. So I've got it right in the corner. I'm going to put a tacking staple to the inside. And I'm only going to put one or two staples in this because I might want to take it out. So again, I'm going to concentrate on the tail. I'm going to need a slit here because this tail wants to fold down here. That's an easy thing to resolve since I decided to have the tail go this way. I'm going to just put a slit here I'm going no deeper than the seam allowance. So I stopped short of it. That allows that tail to sit on the top side. We're using the Sayerite Long Nose Upholstery Staple Gun available at Sayerite. It's a great staple gun for a great price. I'm going to pull this corner into its appropriate spot here. Pretty sure that it's right about there. So I'm going to put some tacking staples on the back side here. Again, we're just trying to fit it in, in, in the right spot. Put two in there. We don't have this tight yet. We're going to do that in a little bit. Okay, I'm going to keep going across, making sure that I'm pulling enough that I've got it into the right area. And it is. And then I'm just going to put a few t staples here. So now we're going to lift it on its side. We don't have anything in the right spot yet. We're just trying to get it in, the, in that right spot. And we're going to start working on these corners. Okay, so wh where's my, my tail's over here on the front side here, which I think looks good. Tail goes all the way over here. So it's already in the right spot. So I'm going to try to find this corner. Make sure it's tucked in there. This foam's actually helping. You can see how the foam kind of just fills everything in. So it's a good idea that they put that on there. I'm going to come around here like this. We are going to be putting some staples in here. So that'll cinch that up along the top. I think I'm just going to put my fingers in here to act like I'm cinching it up, even though I don't want to put staples there now because they'll probably rip through. I don't want tons of pressure on this area. Because if I do, then it's, the vinyl's going to want to rip. So I'm going to just going to put a little bit of pressure down here, making sure I'm in the right spot, and put a few staples here. Before we concentrate on making this corner perfect, let's get this edge perfect. We have it right here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull down here, look for that beautiful seam to fall on that edge like it is now, and then I'm going to come back to this back side and I'm going to staple this in place under a little tension. It'd be great if I had a helper here, but I don't. So I'm actually using the nose of the staple gun to try to pull the fabric down as I staple it as I'm pulling on the front side. So I know that the front side's right where I want it. And this gives a little bit of tension and hopefully will give us the ability to position this corner in a better spot. So when I let go of it, notice how the seam goes up, but as soon as I draw it taut, how the seam falls right on this edge, just out the way I want it, that's about perfect. So I'm gonna draw this taut here. So it looks good along this edge and looks good here. Then we're gonna put some staples in here. I don't think there's a breathe hole in here. Oh, there is. See that, see this area under here? This is meant for uh, some airflow. So we'll have to cut that out later on. We'll just remember that it's there. Or we could look at our old patterns. When we finally have to staple in the 90 degree trough, it'll be easier to do this with a long nose staple gun rather than a short nose staple gun. So if you're buying a Good. staple gun, I recommend you buy the long nose staple gun for applications like stapling in the 90 degree V section of this application. We'll be showing that later on.
Now let's work on this area a little bit before I go any further. Just make sure we got it sitting right where we want it. We opted to use a marine quality vinyl that's a four-way stretch called Eversoft. We also sell another brand called Sunbrella Horizon. It's also a great fabric for an application like this. Seems like there's a lot of loose fabric. Well, don't be alarmed. We're going to work those all out. Right now we're just hacking it in the general location of where we believe it should rest. See how I'm drawing it tight with every staple? The top edge has not yet been secured down well, so that's why there's a few wrinkles uh, near that transitional section. We'll get to those. Okay, we took some of these staples out because I didn't like the wrinkle in there. So I'm going to start massaging the fabric and coming this way to try to work those wrinkles out. That looks better already. So I'm going to put a couple staples here now. Okay, so now we got a little wrinkle there, but I think we can work that out. Yep, by doing that. Actually, that looks pretty good, that like that, doesn't it? Okay, mm -hmm. if I massage the fabric here, you can see I get a little bump there. So I'm going to use my staple puller because I think this one should come out too. And then I'm going to tension it, working that wrinkle out as best as possible. We can use some steam here too to help resolve that issue. That looks much better. So now I'm going to staple in this transition here without putting a lot of pressure on the staple gun because we don't want those staples to go through. This is where the long nose staple gun is better than the short nose. You can get it done with a short nose, but it will be a little bit more difficult. On the end of the nose of the staple gun, if you put a lot of pressure, it'll just blow right through the vinyl. And then we can come over here and we can staple down here drawing a little bit tight. Not too tight because you'll pull those out. These wrinkles are not really going to be seen much and they will probably pull out when we pull the, the vinyl that direction. Nice. Okay, we have a corner here. So we're going to pull it taut, make sure that it looks good. That foam is helping a ton. See how it fills everything in? Foam is your friend. We might have wanted to consider to put the quarter inch foam on the front panel as well. I'm going to create kind of like a fold here. Then we come over here. This fabric just ends over here. Looks good. So we're just going to put some staples close to the end. This is one of the ends of the base. This will be covered by an adjacent seat when it's on the pontoon boat, so you won't even see this section. Little corner here. Let's first put one in here. And let's smash this down to give it the look we want. And then we'll put staples in between. Okay, so the, fa the fabric needs to go around this cutout. So I'm going to staple it, put a staple here. So I'm going to cut just a little bit longer and not go too deep so that I can put a staple right underneath here. Again, no one's going to see this section, so I'm not sure why I'm spending so much time here. And then I can put a staple on this side. Okay, we got our foam here. It needs to be pulled tight here. I'm not going to put staples here or at the, at the top or the bottom. I'm going to actually staple the back end first, pulling it nice and taut so that I pull that corner tight. And I'm going to put a few staples just in the middle in the back here with, with it pulled tight. Just three. Okay, 
and then I'll work on the top side and the bottom side and secure it in place, tensioning the fabric as I go. Okay, now we're gonna just uh, put staples on the inside edge, pulling it taut as we go. And we wanna try to keep the staples in line so we can hide them with Hide'em Gimp. So once I get a, a preliminary staple in there, I'm gonna try to keep it in line. And we'll just keep doing this all around the perimeter. Since we have a nice cutout at the corner there, you'll see what we can do there. So that corner came out nice. Now here, here's a cutout. You just simply cut right up to the hard edge and then that fabric will take that turn. So I'm just cutting out some of this fabric to allow this. This is where the backrest goes so it doesn't get lifted. So we're actually going to staple right on this lip here because nobody sees this. Pulling it taut. And then we'll do the bottom edge around this back side. We're not going to show that. Keeping those staples as far from this edge as possible. Now what we'll do here, since we've created this little dog ear, is we will cut it like that, and then we can kind of fold it down and take out the bulk to make it look as best as possible. Not that anybody's gonna see it, because they're not. And then we can trim this all out. Okay, so here's our opening to allow some breathability. We have it stapled on both sides of that. All I'm gonna do is cut a slit and hopefully that'll allow enough breathability. If you wanna be more precise and cut it bigger, you can. Small wrinkles can be removed with hot steam. We're gonna show you how that's done. Okay, so you can see the wrinkles and we're gonna use a steamer, hot steamer, to use for clothing. Sorry, I'm going to have to put it down a little bit to get it in a spot where I can get it to it. So this can take several minutes here. So you want to heat up the vinyl and then work the vinyl. The excess fabric at this location is rather large and using steam on something this large is usually very difficult to do. Uh, it'll take out some of the wrinkle, but not all of it. So what we recommend is at this location on the underside where the staples are the closest to the wrinkle, remove some staples and pull the vinyl in a manner that will take out this wrinkle. Typically you'll find that that is almost always easier than using steam on such a large wrinkle like this. But uh, we're going to show you at the end, after about five minutes, uh, this wrinkle is almost removed. You have to be careful not to damage the vinyl because too much heat can actually cause the vinyl to be damaged or discolor it. You can work other parts of the vinyl and that kind of stri uh, shrinks it up a little bit in that area. So it's a, it's a little bit better. It's still got a little bit of a wrinkle there, but not bad at all. We got most of them worked out with the steam. And it did take about five full minutes to do that. We didn't film all of it. There will be a seat on top of the base that will open up. Let's hide some of the staples using Hydem Gimp. In order to secure Hydem Gimp on this and kind of give it a decorative look, I'm going to use a razor blade and I'm going to cut my vinyl, if I can get it in there, right very close to the staples because I don't really want this uh, edge to be exposed. The Sayerite stocks some prefabricated brands of Hydem Gimp, or you can make it yourself. So this is Hydem Gimp, and the idea is that you open up the center and you staple a staple in here. We have a video that shows how to make it. Just click the icon at the top right to see that video. So I like to just open up the end and put my stapler right in the end and then position it where I want it. 
right over top of the staples and the staple is in place. Now that staple didn't go right in the middle. Sometimes it's hard to get the first staple in there, but open it up like this. Make sure it's in the middle. That one's hidden completely. So that's how you should use it. Open it up, put the end of the gun in it, position it where you want it. And look at that. Makes it a finished looking piece. So now we have the base done, the back's been done in a separate video, and this cushion portion has been done in a separate video. If you'd like to see those, click the uh, icon at the top right. There we go. Don't go away. The materials list and the tools list is coming up next. It is only through your loyal support that these free videos are made available. Thanks for your loyal support. And be sure to subscribe to the Sarat YouTube channel. Click the bell to be notified of new videos when they become available. Thanks. And now the materials and tools list. We used a marine quality vinyl from Sayerite called Eversoft, though you'll find other brands as well at the Sayerite website. If you have any questions about the materials or the tools that we used, be sure to give us a call or email us. We're glad to help. If you'd like to see tutorial videos on how to make the backrest or the seat portion for this corner bench seat for a pontoon boat, click the videos here. I'm Eric Grant, and from all of us here at Sailrite, thanks for watching.